Some time ago, before German watchtowers looked out across the cliffs and bays of the island of Guernsey, people believed in many strange things. Some said that creatures called wavelets roamed our shores. They were said by some to be no bigger than a mouse, while others would swear they were as large as a child. These wavelets were seen by some flitting around the shoreline at dusk and after dark on moonlit nights. They were said to shimmer like fish, but many said that fish was all they were. Our story tells of two brothers. The younger Jem was as sure that wavelets existed as that night followed day. One day he was out on the cliffs catching luck when his older brother Eli came to fetch him back for supper. Jem believed that if a seagull dropping fell on him, he would have luck and the girl he loved, Marie, would fall in love with him at the fate for Midsummer's Eve in two days' time. Eli thought Jem was just childish and the boys tramped home. Marie had been both mute and crippled since an accident in the bay the summer before. She had been down on the beach with the vrac collectors when one of the horses had bolted and her leg had been caught and crushed underneath the cart's wheel. She had seemed distracted just before and was staring out towards the headland where La Critter Fay or Ferry Crossing was. What had she seen? Since that day, she hadn't uttered a word. After supper that night, Jem couldn't sleep, so he sneaked out of the low bedroom window of his family's cottage and made his way along the, the bay to a little wall which ran out to sea at Portlet. He cast his crab line when something caught his eye in the water. It seemed as if there was a silvery flicking light there. A sharp tug and something slipped through the bars of a lobster pot. It trailed towards him through the shallows. Jem had caught a wavelet. Jem rushed home in excitement with the little creature it seemed to be growing with the tide, and when Eli saw it, he nearly fell over. The little creature was making strange sounds. It seemed to be saying its name, Le Petit Colas. It was communicating with them. The boys knew that keeping a magical creature could only bring bad luck and get them into a heap of trouble for mum and dad. So the next day, they hatched a plan to release the little being at the beach nearby. At the beach the next morning, the boys prepared to release Le Petit Collat when they saw a limping figure approaching. It was Marie. She was making her way towards the Crit of Fay. Without thinking, they followed her. Marie walked as if in trance towards the little burial ground known as the Crit of Fay or Fairy Crossing. When she reached it, she entered briefly before leaving and heading back towards the beach, Le Petit Collat began to shake. Le Grand Collat, he said, Le Grand Collat, coming for Queenie. Suddenly there was a tremble sound out to sea. The boys understood Le Grand Collat, Colin's father, was coming for Marie. She was to be Mome or Queen of the Fate that very night. They had to save her. Back on the beach that evening, the boys met an old fisherman. He nodded towards them and walked on his way. 
When they turned to shield Le Petit Collat from his gaze, the wavelet had disappeared. As the evening went on, the noise from the nearby fate increased and a great fire was lit. Inside, Marie was dressed in wild flowers as the beautiful moan, while a great pot of fish stew bubbled on the stove to feed those who came to celebrate Midsummer's Eve. Nearby, the boys waited, and then the moon cast a mighty shadow as the king of waves and his army of merfolk appeared. The high tide had stretched the king so that he was as long as the tallest man in the parish. He was clad in chain mail of linked shells which shimmered with mother of pearl and around the king his foot soldiers gathered. Jem and Eli steeled themselves and followed the strange army to the tent. Inside, Marie had been left alone and the king approached her, ready to pull her away from the tent and out of their lives forever. The king's soldiers advanced with their seaweed whips snapping around them. Undaunted, Jem and Eli sliced their way through them like warriors. But then the king grabbed Marie with his lobster-like grip and Jem found himself backed up against a bubbling cauldron when suddenly a little shape burst out of the darkness. Le Petit Collat sent the King of Waves tumbling into the great pot and amid the great boils and bubbles, he sank into the liquid. The merfolk fled as the people entered the tent. Marie shouted out, I've been saved, saved with a kiss and she planted a kiss on Jem's cheek, which went as red as a radish skin. In their great surprise at hearing the mute girl talk, the crowd didn't notice the old fisherman smuggle Le Petit Collat out the back of the tent. All the folk at the fete that night remarked on the deliciously fishy taste of the broth. Spread among the bellies of a thousand islanders, the king of waves would never find his shape again. In time, Gemma Marie married and although her leg never healed, Marie became a storyteller of great fame in the island. She saw Le Petit Collin often throughout her long life. Some said she was just making up for the year she didn't breathe a word and they were just stories after all. Perhaps if you stare out to sea on a moonlit night, you'll see a flicker in the water which looks like one of the wavelets in the story. But don't worry, it's just a trick of the light, petite trick of the light, waving back at you before it disappears. Alla